Peace everyone, Unmaskart here, and welcome to another live stream tutorial. Today is a, gonna be a different day because as you've noticed, this is a public live stream. So we're here on YouTube for everyone to join and enjoy the process of today. Uh, and the plan is to finish this project. Uh, for those of you that don't know where this project came from, uh, I host uh, our club on my website. The link for that is in the description. And I do four live sessions every week, uh, Monday through Thursday. And this particular project here, we have been working on for quite a while. Uh, I believe this is, this is day 17 of this project. And we're gonna be finally finishing it we did this entire project using only Carbothello pastel pencils, um, and that's it. Uh, Carbothello pastel pencils on pastel mat. And we last worked on it uh, this past Tuesday and filled in the rest of the tablecloth. Still have some uh, fine details to do on the tablecloth, uh, finessing the shadows and transitions and everything. Um, but uh, today we'll be untaping the border and this project will be officially complete. Uh, I will try my best to say hello to everyone in chat. Uh, there seems to be a lot of you. Hello, Linda, Susan, Lilia, good to see you. It's been a while. Chandri, always a pleasure. Uh, Claire, Diane, Georgina, hello, good to see you over here. Sneaks, what a pleasure. Patrick, hello. Uh, Joanne, Yana, Marcy. All right, well, I'm gonna get started. Um, and if you guys have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask, I love questions. I never get enough questions. And uh, I'm just gonna start with some black and sort of uh, work these shadows a little bit. Just smoothing them out. And if you are either new to my channel or not currently an art club member and would like to learn colored pencils or pastels, then by all means, click the link in the description, sign up, for the art club and start learning today. I have a ton of different projects ranging from every subject you can imagine. Uh, all of the projects, all of the tutorials are in real time. And like I said, I live stream them Monday through Thursday. So all the new projects are live streamed. So during the learning process, you can ask me questions and all of that. Hello, uh, Ioana. Hopefully I pronounced that correct. Uh, Deeksha, hello, hello. Teresa, good morning to you. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to mention is that next week uh, we'll be starting a new pastel project as this one will be coming to an end today. And that new pastel project, um, I'm actually going to make it available to everybody. So starting next Monday, uh, uh, the new pastel project will be public for everyone to view and enjoy and follow along. And we're going to do thunderstorm, lightning, uh, landscape. So that's that's going to be the plan. It'll be a two-day project. Utilizing soft pastels, so. Oh, thank you, Bubba. 
Appreciate that. Yeah, the uh, th this project here. If you're on if you're on part one, Georgina, it's going to take you a little while to get through. Uh, most of the lessons for this project were around two hours. Um, so it's a it's a long project. Like I said, today is part seventeen of this project. We've been working on it for quite some time now. How long did it take to make this? Um, well, if I, mm, I rounded off, let's just say 16 parts, um, about one and a half hours per part. So I'd say around 30-ish hours, maybe. Um, kind of rounding up a little bit. I think that's probably... Because if I, if I round it to 24, uh, I don't think that's quite right. Because there was several days where it was like two hours, and I think there was even like a two and a half hour day sometime. So I, I'd say about 30 hours. Which actually, considering the size of this, uh, just to give you an idea, here's my hand. Um, so that's how large the project is. and um, 30 hours actually isn't too long for a project this large. Of course, uh, I think it would be best to ask some of my students in chat that are also doing this project and ask them how long they've been working on theirs. Because, of course, they watch the live live tutorial and then they work on their own afterwards. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are closer to the 40 hour mark on their project. And I gotta say, it's very impressive to, to see how well they've done on this project as well, because uh, this uh, was definitely a challenge, as you can imagine by looking at it. Um, not, not an easy task, this project here. Definitely a challenge. Very, very fun project. I got all these, all these different objects and textures and all of that. Uh, so it was very fun to do. Appreciate the question, by the way. Uh, you average at least an hour or two after each class. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, hey there, Chrissy. Good to see you. Yes, all is well. Um, fairly decent weather today here in Poland. Not too bad. Much warmer than it was the uh, last few days. But apparently the weekend's not supposed to be too great. But I'm crossing my fingers in hopes that that will change. Hope all is well for you down under. And for everyone else. Hope you're having a fantastic week. And hope everyone has a good weekend.
Hey there, Anna. Good to see you as well. Appreciate it. I'm going to soften a lot of the texture here that I have in my tablecloth. That's going to be where I spend a majority of my time today. I think this uh, transition of the shadow down here needs a little work. One of the other projects we're having a lot of fun on uh, in the art club, for those of you that have yet to join, um, is a portrait of Anya Taylor-Joy as Beth Harmon from the Queen's Gambit series. Actually, I can grab that really quick and show it to you. So you haven't seen it. We worked on this a bit yesterday. This is, uh, this is what we're working on for the colored pencil project in the art club. And we'll probably finish that one up next week. Yeah, I was, con I was considering getting mine, mine framed as well. This project is so, uh, so fun to look at, and I, I was considering getting it framed as well. It is a nice looking still life. Oh, you're new to pastel as well, Georgina. Yeah, a lot of a lot of new people to pastels. Totally, uh, totally getting this project knocked out. Just, it's it's amazing. I mean, I was hesitant to do this project myself, let alone my one of my first, uh, one of my first pastel projects. I don't know. That it's some level of braver, bravery there or just a, a bit overconfident in their teacher, which I appreciate. Yeah, I agree. Um, Queen's Gambit was a fantastic series. I like that it um, introduced a lot of people to the game of chess. Many of you know I'm a huge fan of chess. And for those of you that don't know, I'm a huge fan of chess. <laughs> I've, been, I've been playing chess for about three years at this point on and off, not consistently. But I've been playing really consistent the past few months. Um, and in fact, I'm planning on going to my first uh, in-person tournament next Wednesday. Just waiting for the confirmation email to see if that's going to happen. But I am signed up. Uh, Uh, 
Um, I draw with colored pencil and pastel pencil. I'm using pastel pencil right now. Uh, my sound comes in bits, like you don't. You mean you don't hear me very well? Uh, was the was the sound cutting out? Yeah, uh, my <laughs> my microphone stand it it sort of gave out and broke this week, um, and I'm waiting for the new one to come in the mail. It, unfortunately, I don't I don't think it will be here until next week sometime. So it, my my microphone's a little bit farther away than I generally have it. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to talk a little bit louder. I feel like I'm yelling. I'm not the I'm not the type of person to to speak very loudly. Very soft voice, and I physically can't even yell. So uh, speaking speaking loud is not something that comes natural to me. Okay, you guys can hear me okay? Perfect, perfect. Doing the the tablecloth, quite tedious, uh, in spite of its simplicity. Getting getting good coverage with your pastels just takes time. Not necessarily a a difficult thing to do, but certainly time consuming. A bit bit of a patience test. So what other questions do you guys have for me? I think it's it's been a while since I've seen a, a number of you. Didn't expect you to run out of questions this early. All right, let's switch over to this color. Yeah, I think I think the sound issue might be on your end, Lilia. Not sure if you can hear me say that or not. Uh, if anybody is new to pastels, 
and you want a fun uh fun challenge doing doing just a draped cloth can be a really a really good challenge don't have to deal with a lot of colors so it allows you to focus mainly on just getting good at blending working with the medium low stakes you know A lot of really small changes that I'm doing right now. Slowly creeping in with some of the really small details. They come in slowly, so it's hard to appreciate them in the moment. But they show up nicely at the end. Um, the return of peaceful pastels, I don't have any, um, have any plans of doing that currently. Uh, the, the first season was unfortunately very unsuccessful. Uh, so it sort of takes up more time than what it's worth. I was, I was really hoping for it to turn into something that I could do almost like a weekly thing. But uh, unfortunately, just uh, only a few people watched it. Uh, how do I have the patience to stay at a project so much time and don't rush things? Usually finish impatient with all my drawings. Yeah, that's that's not just a you thing. That's an everybody thing. Um, building good habits with your artwork is something that I recommend. Uh, one of the things that I am always telling my students is to remain patient. And the, the best thing you can do is learn to recognize when you're being less patient with your work and then stop. So learn to recognize when you're not being patient and stop working on the project. Uh, even if you take just a five minute break or whatnot, you know, make some tea, stretch your legs, do a, you know, a few push-ups or jumping jacks or whatever, get the, the blood flowing a bit. Sometimes that can help, um, but you want to take, you, you want to take breaks. You, you don't want to try to pile drive your way through a long, complex project because your eyes get tired, your, you know, your back might get tired depending on how comfortable your seat is. There's a lot of factors that go into play that wear you out, uh, especially when you're not really thinking about it. You know, one of the interesting facts that I learned about chess as I was getting into it was that at the top level, you know, a lot of people don't consider chess a sport, but I certainly consider it a sport because it is exhausting to do. But uh, there was this article that came out, I'm not sure when, 
but at the top level, you know, they, when they play their classical games, um, you know, they're they're sitting there for six to eight hours playing one single game, intensely thinking about every single move, and they can they can burn a ton of calories. I, I don't know what it is like. They can burn around like two thousand calories just sitting there playing a game of chess because they're so intensely thinking. A lot of people don't realize how how many how much calories your brain burns when it's when it's thinking and problem solving and stuff. Uh, and and art is a, very much the same thing. You know, the the process of trying to recreate something requires essentially problem solving you have these tools and the problem is you need your paper to look like that picture you're staring at and so you have to actively problem solve and and think about which color you're going to use how much pressure you need to apply the technique that, you, that you're going to utilize all of these different things and so you know you're also sort of in that same realm you're using your brain in a way that that burns a lot of calories and that can make you tired uh, even though i find art to be also exceptionally relaxing uh, it's still exhausting to the body and to the mind and when your mind gets exhausted like that that's what causes causes that impatience and so Learning to recognize that and take a short break, grab a snack, whatever, that's going to help you tremendously. Uh, one of the things that has helped me throughout this project is that I don't work on it every day. You know, we, I only work on it twice a week for a few hours, and that's it. Uh, it takes longer to complete, sure, but I complete it at a much higher level because of it. So you have to ask yourself that question. Would you rather finish a project in a single sitting and it not exemplify your best work? Or would you rather it take a couple weeks and exemplify your best work? Uh, which item in the still life turned out to be the easiest to do that you originally than you originally thought? Um, this bowl here, this this metal bowl. Let me zoom in for a second. See the engraving. I th I thought this bowl was going to be much harder, but it actually turned out to be quite easy. Also, this plate, th this plate turned out to be relatively easy because it's mostly dots. The shiny parts are just dots. Uh, when you even when you look at the reference photo, it pretty much just dots. So it was, it was sort of surprisingly easy. Oh, hey there, Mache. Good to see you. Uh, this here, the uh, the glass with the lemons in it. This one wasn't too too difficult. Um, the chalice, the chalice was a challenge. Um, 
But actually, one of the more difficult parts was the pancakes. Uh, creating that pancake-like texture uh, was unique to to myself because I, I had never drawn baked food before. Uh, so it was uh, it was a unique challenge. Um, a lot of dots, a lot of dots on the pancakes and stuff. Fun, fun colors to use, sort of that fried bread kind of look. The crispy, the crispy fried bread. Oh, thank you, Mache. The, the background of this project uh, is actually what took the longest, partially due to the size of it. And um, I didn't use soft pastels for the background. I did the background in pastel pencils also, the entire project using just the, the set of Carbothellos. Yeah, it took it took several sittings to do to do the background of this project. So much so much to fill in. Uh, why pastel pencil instead of colored pencil? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so I actually had one student do this project with colored pencils. Um, I personally wouldn't touch this scale of a project with colored pencils uh, because it would just it would just take forever. Um, but I teach mainly I I teach pastels and colored pencils. And this was just the uh, the project that we had decided to do. Because one of the other things uh, that I want to mention about the art club is that all the projects that we do are suggestions from art club members. So I don't I don't just draw whatever it is I like. Um, if you want to do a project. You know, just let me know what subject you want me to do, and and that's the project that we usually end up doing. Um, just like I like I said earlier, the next the next project is going to be a, a landscape that involves lightning, sort of a a stormy landscape, and that was a suggestion. And for this project here, I I've had this reference photo for quite some time. And I just asked if if everyone wanted to do something very complex, uh, very difficult, and just push their you know push their skills to the limit. And they were more than happy to, and so that's what uh, sort of came about. That's how this project came about. But before that, we um, I remember we did an owl in colored pencil. Um, there was one short series that I did using just a 12 pack of polychromos colored pencils. Um, and those weren't suggestions, but they were, they were something that I wanted to, to go through a good training exercise for color theory and mixing and all of that. A lot of people enjoyed that series, myself included. Um, and then the portrait of Anya Taylor joy, that was sort of a happenstance because I was going to draw her portrait anyway, because, uh, because why not, <laughs> you know? And uh, so I asked if if everybody would like 
do that and they they said yeah so um otherwise i was just going to draw it on my own it's just going to be something i do in my spare time but that's that's essentially how it how it came down to it okay chrissy you have a good night oh it was nice seeing you Uh, what size of pastel pencils do I need for this? Um, well, when it comes to pastel pencils, I always recommend just getting the full set of uh, Carbothellos. Uh, that's what I have. That's what I've been using for years. Um, it's the best it, for the cost. It's just straight up the, the best choice you can make for pastel pencils. Hi there, Sunny. Uh, is the next project going to be easier than this one? Yes, it will be significantly easier. Uh, thank you, Backroads. Uh, also, hello, Pink Bird and Harini. Yar Harini. Uh, did I start with the background? Yes. Yes, I started with the background, so I put the... Uh, Put the line art, I applied the line art down on the pastel mat and we just started, uh, we started down here actually. So we did the, it, this is not black down here, although on screen it probably looks black. Um, uh, it's pretty close to black, but we started down here, wrapped around with the black, we came up here and then we applied some of the colors to the background, sort of the foundational stuff getting some of the wrinkles and the curtain back there. Uh, and we just kept building layers and layers and layers. And we worked around all the objects. Um, and then that's, that's uh, pretty much it. So we just filled in the background completely. And then we went from left to right. Um, uh, started with the elderberry twig here and the little vase that it's sitting in. Then we started with the apples and then we did the bowl. And from the bowl, if I'm not mistaken, we we jump down here to this bowl and did the table plus the coins and then jumped back up here, went here, here, here. And I can't remember which one we did first. I think we did this and then we did the plate and the leaf, then the ladle and the lid, then this and the tablecloth. That was sort of the order that we went through. Just thinking about the order uh, to, to do this was task in itself. Always always try to choose the the easiest easiest path to take. Uh, since pastels are sensitive to touch, you know, you don't want to, don't want to ruin your project by 
wiping your hand through it. Oh, thank you, Backroads. But I can assure you, you are more than capable of doing something this detailed. Uh, those of you in chat that have been working on this project, how, how do you feel about your progress through it? I think I can... I think I might even be able to pull up the Discord. Uh, show off... Show off a few of the the work the people following the project are doing. Yeah, so here's Joanne. So this is this is Joanne's work here, and I mean you can see it's you 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 almost can't tell the difference, right? See how good she did. She's still working. She's still working on her plate over here, so she's missing this section. But that's Joanne. Uh, who else we got in here? Diane, you're in here somewhere, aren't you? Gotta scroll a little bit. I uh, here's Susan. Here's Susan. Hers is looking great. I mean... Yeah, Susan, you should be very happy with yours. It looks fantastic. How many how many pastel projects have you done, Susan? Joanne, yeah. So the, the, Joanne's second pastel project, uh, totally knocking it out of the park. Here's Cherry. Cherry's looks better than mine. Look at that. It's ridiculous. Look at her bowl. It's gorgeous. Perfect. Is perfect. Her chalice there, so shiny. Looks it looks just fantastic. Look at that. It's great. So you don't you don't have oh and here's Diane's. Diane, oh the, the values in Diane's are just otherworldly. Just super good. Super good. Love the contrast and the apples and everything. So, I mean, you do not have to be a super professional. You do not have to be doing this stuff for years to follow my instructions. So, no, no doubt you'd be able to keep up. No doubt. Uh, let's see. I, I forget what I was doing. But yeah, everyone's turning out fantastic work. Um, also, uh, just a quick reminder. Uh, so next Friday, I'll be streaming as well. Next Friday, we're going to do the live critiques. Uh, so you'll see you'll see these these projects here uh, from the art club members, and I'll do I'll be doing some critiques. Uh, I haven't posted. I haven't posted the uh, the thread to share your artwork yet, but I'll do that next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, in the Unmask Family Facebook group. Um, if you're not already a family member, uh, the link is in the description, and I'll be doing critiques next Friday. So just a reminder of that. I do them the first Friday of every month. Yeah, so that's that Diane's second pastel project as well. Yeah. So both Diane and Joanne just totally showing us all how it's done. Cherry's already got her her frame. Yeah, that's that's awesome.
I don't know if I remember to put the Discord link in the description. I might have forgot. Um, let me go ahead and share the Discord link in chat, just in case I forgot to put it in the description. Uh, you all are more than welcome to join the Discord. Uh, one of the other uh, benefits of the Discord plus the Art Club membership is that during the live lessons, uh, I am always in the live lesson chat, and I have my headphones on. So during the live lessons, uh, you're always more than welcome to just uh, ask your questions to me directly during the live stream. Let me let me just uh, go ahead and share the Discord link here. There you go. So feel free to join the Discord. Uh, when we send in our photos on Discord or whatever, colors are not as vibrant. Yeah, I mean that's that's sort of the uh, sort of the uh, the issue with photographing artwork. Never never looks as good. You know? uh, what would be the suggestion on the color of pastel mat for this project? Um, I think there's a color very similar to that. Uh, or like the maize color, which is kind of a yellowish color. That one probably wouldn't be too bad. I I use white because I cover up the paper completely. Uh, the thing with colored pastel mat is that it's only beneficial if you let the color show through. Um, but for me, I always cover the paper no matter what. So I end up... You, you never see the color underneath, so it doesn't really benefit me much. But it, it's also nice sometimes to work on a non-white surface because you, you get to work in both directions more easily. You can work going dark and then you can use light colors to sh to show the highlights. Uh so that that's actually something nice about the 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 non-white surfaces to work on. And and that can make things easier at times as well. Oh, 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 the, uh, the mat board, the, the mat board for, uh, framing it. That's, um, hmm. I suppose it, it, it depends on the kind of frame. Uh, if you're going for like a real modern look where the frames may be made out of metal or plastic and it's like black or something flat like that, uh, then I just stick with white, keep it nice and clean. But if you're going for a more classical look with a wooden frame and something around there, I would go with like, like a light brown sort of khaki color somewhere around that range, and possibly with a, like a white core or a black core or something like that to give some contrast to the edge of the mat. Um, yeah, maybe maybe something like that. And 
And I'd probably go for probably a dark wood color for the frame if in an ideal world. Dark wood with a sort of a light khaki color for the the mat board, framing mat board. Yeah, beige. Beige would be good. Just about, just about ready to call my uh, tablecloth here done. I do want to add some blue in a few areas. Oh, hi there, uh, Priyesh. Uh, you had a teacher tell you that the frame makes the painting and not inexpensive frames. Uh, I'd say that's debatable. You know, sometimes cheap frames can look good. If it, it just depends on the style, I think. You know, if you're going for something more classical with like a wooden frame, then probably avoid like fake wood frames because they're just going to fall apart anyway. Uh, but if you're going for something modern, then, you know, a cheap plastic frame can still look really good. Uh, but you got to be careful, just uh, for everyone that's considering the framing of their pastel project, you do have to be careful with uh, framing it. You want to make sure that uh, it's a glass panel, not a plexiglass or plastic. You want to make sure that it is real glass. Preferably, you would choose a UV protective glass just to help protect the pigments even more. Uh, but it's very important that you use real glass and not plastic because um, Plastic causes static electricity, which can pull the pastel off of the pastel mat. So you want to make sure that, first off, uh, is standard in the frame. The other thing is, of course, you want to make sure the glass isn't touching the actual painting. So that's the other thing. But that's it. Not a lot to remember. Oh, that's cool, CC. I bet that was a, a fun trip. Seeing seeing those paintings in real life is just and you realize you you never realize how bad photos of artwork are until you see those paintings in real life. Because, you know, a couple years ago, my wife and I, we went to Amsterdam and went to the Van Gogh Museum and the Rijks Museum. And I was never a big fan of Van Gogh's artwork because it was a bit too... Um, abstract for my style you know everybody has different tastes but when i saw his work in person 
I immediately became a fan. Uh, photos of his work don't even come close to how actually wonderful his work is. His, his brushstroke and texture control is very admirable, and I immediately became a fan. You know, he was never, never very wealthy for his work, though he was quite known in his day while he was still alive. Um, but he was far from being better off. And so a lot of times he would actually use, use both sides of his canvas uh, to paint. So he has many projects that are front and back, actually. Oil paintings, front and back. And so they're on display in like a glass box. So you can walk around and see both sides. It's kind of cool. It's actually sort of a unique unique way to view paintings. But of course you can't hang them on a wall. So they have to sit in the middle of the room. Which can make make for awkward display. It probably looks a lot like I'm just wiping black on black right now. But um, maybe you can see the separation of the background and the table. It's very, very subtle, and it's even more subtle in the reference photo. Um, but my table is not quite as smooth as I want here on the dark part of it, so just adding a little bit of black to smooth it out. Same thing in these shadows over here. They're a bit too bright. I'm just going to be jumping around now, sort of jumping from subject to subject, um, adjusting values, adjusting colors, all of those things. The black will go a long way. Going, going to the Rakes Museum quite literally changed my life. Like, seeing uh, Rembrandt and uh, too many names that to remember, um, seeing their work in person, I realized how much more, how much better they still are than me. <laughs> uh, it's... Honestly, I don't even feel remotely close to their level of perfection. But that I guess that could be said about a lot of other artists that are still alive, but uh, it just sort of blows my mind how how amazing their work still is and how relevant it is still today. Like, it's just... It's so good... And, and a lot of the paintings are just huge, just so big, like paintings, full-scale mural size oil paintings of like 30 people. It just, it's unbelievable. It's just, it's just crazy, crazy good. I want to go back. I want to go back so bad cuz they, you know, they they don't display all the work that they have. They just constantly sort of change it out. So I'd love to go back and see stuff that I haven't seen before. Cuz you could if they had all the artwork that they have in the 
basement or warehouse or wherever they keep it, conservatory. Um, you could be walking around the Rake's Museum for weeks and still not see it all. Like they have so much artwork, and so they're just constantly changing it out. And I would love to go back and review the big pieces and see some some new stuff. Because I don't think I've ever been more impressed by anything in my entire life than when I walked through that museum. And there's probably a bit of a, a difference from my perspective as a professional artist looking at other professionals' work than just the average person that goes to an art museum. Because until you do it as a profession, you never really know how much time investment there is in such such cases. And um, I just, I honestly, I don't even understand how they lived long enough to finish the body of work that they have. Like it, just incredible. I, I could talk about it all day long because of how insane it is. Oh, hey there, Electro. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciated. Always coming in with the super chats. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, is my holding hand, is my hand touching the paper? Absolutely not. It's, it's, it's always hovering. Always hovering. You can't, can't rest your hand on the, the pastel. Uh, what am I specifically looking to polish in this phase? The entire thing. Uh, with the exception of the background, I, I don't have anything to do with the background. Yeah, the, uh, when we were working on the background, I was saying repeatedly, don't ever move on from the background until you are absolutely certain you will never touch it again. Because working around objects is an absolute nightmare being next to impossible. So the background, completely good. Um, there was a little little hiccup over here that I corrected. Um, I'm, I need to smooth out my apples a little bit. They're, uh, the transition's not quite uh, what I want it to be. Um, this lid still needs a little bit of work. Really, I don't have a lot left to do for this project to come to an end. A few things to, to be smoothed out, a few values to be corrected, uh, but really not, not too much. I mean, I could I could do this for for days. Um, for those of you that know me, know that 
the polishing stage is my favorite stage of every piece of work that I create because it's very relaxing, very non-stressful process. Uh, I suppose I'll be working on this uh, until you guys stop asking questions or, uh, or I run out of things to talk about. <laughs> which usually coincides with you guys uh, asking questions, so. I did want to add some blue to the tablecloth. I will do that now. I'm using the uh, 430 blue, by the way. Giving just a touch of color into some of the shadows really help make the tablecloth look a bit more natural. Hope everyone is enjoying today's live stream, by the way. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me, if you are. Yeah, I agree. It is fun to go back and touch things up. Hello, Marns. Oh, that's good to hear, Diane. Yeah, that's that's important. That's definitely important. Getting comfortable with uh, different colors and identifying shapes and all of that. Very, very important for sure. See, let's work on these apples a little bit. Touch up these shadows. I can just smooth out the shadow side of these apples. I think they'll look even better. 
Oh, thank you, Marnes. Done. Another quick reminder for any of the new people that come in. Uh, this project here, there is a full tutorial every single step of the way. All 17 parts of it in the Art Club, which is my membership website. I have a link for it in the description. Along with many, many other projects, both in pastel and colored pencil, even a few graphite projects. So if you're interested in learning, from me. I do live lessons every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and yeah, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, four times a week. Uh, and if you have any questions about the membership or anything like that, feel free to ask me while you're here, and I am here live. Uh, and also any of my students that are also in chat, plenty of them in chat watching. There we go. That apple does look better now. A bit smoother in the shadows. Sometimes just the tiniest change makes the biggest difference. Oh, it's 1 a.m. in New Zealand. Sorry to hear it's so late. I tend to put people to sleep, so I don't know if you'll be awake too much longer. But I do appreciate you tuning in, even if it is late for you. At least it's the weekend, right? Uh, I can go a little bit darker here. It's kind of a brownish color. I got a dark brown in here somewhere. You're almost sorry you finished this project. I can understand that. It's a, it's a bittersweet sometimes when you finish finish a large scale project like this here. Sort of like. Being a parent, I imagine, being proud of your kid graduating high school or something, sort of a bittersweet, that chapter of their life is over, sort of moving out on their own and whatnot. Never experienced that personally, but I can imagine it's a bittersweet moment. How do I get the ornate detail on the silver bowl and plate? Actually, Lisa, that's a fantastic question. Uh, and uh, with it being such a fantastic question, you may be surprised that it is a remarkably simple process. Um, so this bowl here is more difficult than this bowl over here. Uh, but uh, talking about this bowl here first, before I get over here, I know you're probably referring to this one. But this bowl was mainly uh, just using black to establish the shapes and then using the lighter colors to put in the reflection and those little details. For this bowl here, for this bowl here, I actually anticipated, I mentioned it earlier in the stream, that this was going to be the most difficult part. I'll zoom in again so you can see it. So I thought that this bowl was going to be much more difficult, but really I ignored the engraving. Just we just we just completely ignored the engraving and we focused on all of these colors that make up the reflective property of the bowl. 
And once we got that put in, we just used the black pencil and the white pencil. And we just drew in the design. Um, and then we used the white pencil for some of those edges of the engraving that, that the light was hitting, kind of shining off of. And that's, uh, that's it. Uh, we, we did very much the same thing on the, the uh, handle of the ladle here. Sort of just filled in the whole thing with a gray. Established a little bit of the light. And then we added the details on top of that layer. Uh, and this bowl here, the edging on the bowl, again, a very much, very similar process, sort of ignoring the details early on and then applying them on top of the base layer of color. Thank you for the question. If you want to know uh, the answer to that question in even more detail, then by all means, sign up for the art club. Then you can, then you can watch the answer in real time. You're always going to learn more that way. I'd love to see you in the live streams, Lisa. I have another Lisa, actually. Now there's another Lisa that's uh, in the art club. So if I do see you over there, we'll have two Lisas. Yes, Susan, the next, the next pastel project, even though I'm going to use soft pastels, yeah, totally doable with just the pencils. So no worries. No worries at all. There we go. Got a little bit more depth in this glass now looks quite a bit better. I keep, I keep looking at my project and the reference photo and then my project on my other monitor, uh, trying to find the very small details not in my drawing. And I found one. So this apple, there's a shadow right here, but there's a reflection. So there's a little tiny highlight that I actually missed on this apple right here, and it shows up out here, a couple little highlights. One right there and then one right beside it, a little, little dashed line, very, very subtle. You can barely see the change, but yeah. That's there. Uh, let's see what other little highlight may uh, may I have missed. Not too much. This apple seems a bit bright. I'm gonna darken that apple a bit too bright. I'm just going to lightly cover it with a darker brown color. Just tone it down a tiny bit. Kind of in the shadows, so it 
not being hit as hit by as much light. So it shouldn't be as bright as that apple. There we go. Just tone it down a tiny bit. Bring in some more browns into this bowl here, and definitely some more yellow. Yeah, for sure, some nice bright yellow to this bowl. Actually, pretty much everywhere. And this lid definitely needs some brown. All that background reflecting in this bowl here, or in the lid, I mean. And in the ladle. That's good to hear, Claire. That is always good to hear. Yeah, this, uh, this has been a wonderful project for learning. So as I mentioned, next week the uh, the next pastel project will be that under landscape, and uh, we were talking. To, you know, we talk about so many projects. Um, had we discussed the the following project, because the next pastel project will be rather short, just be that two days. Just be next Monday, Tuesday, and that project will be done. Uh, so do you guys want to do another complex pastel project? Do you want to do something else? Uh, you want to do a portrait? Let me know. Let me know what you guys are thinking for the next project. We probably had already talked about it, but I can never remember. But we might as well discuss what we're going to do next. Next week will kind of be a vacation. Uh, landscapes are quite a bit easier. So you'd like to do a portrait? OK. Complex. Well, portrait is pretty complex. I can, I can find a, a difficult portrait to do. That's. That's not hard to find. That could be fun. A portrait with a background, maybe some foliage or flowers or maybe somebody with crazy face tattoo or I don't know, something unique that makes the portrait difficult and complex. That is always an option. I like the uh, like the enthusiasm to continue the complex subjects. Like in the comp the complexity of the the projects. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, I think it's settled. Probably going to do a portrait. Portrait with uh, some kind of complexity in the outfit, maybe. A shirt, some textures or whatnot. Yeah, sounds good. 
Pencils only. Yeah, I think it's I think it's settled. And do a portrait. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up, Lily. Eh? I'm not even sure what that exactly is. Hey, let me Google that real quick. Oh, is that just like a high contrast? Getting a lot of, like, one light, a single light portrait where half of the face is really dark. Yeah, that, that seems to be the case, a single light portrait. So you get really harsh shadows and sort of uh, like a spotlight almost. Yeah does create a really dynamic uh, image. Yeah, I'll 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 find us a find us a good one. Uh and also there's um in the Discord, there's the the channel in the Discord channel, or the is it a channel? Uh, I'm still not quite good with Discord. Yeah, in the text channel, there's reference photo channel um, that you can. So if you find a, a reference photo uh, that you're that you're keen on for the portrait project. Uh, feel free to share the link or share the image in there. Preferably share the link because then uh, you can, I can get the higher resolution without having to Google it, whatever. Emma Stone as Cruella. I do like Emma Stone. He is nice to look at. I always, I always liked her in Zombieland. Zombieland and uh, Easy A. That was another one that I really liked. All right, time to get some yellow going on in here. Let's bust out the yellow. Uh, my drawing is not laying flat. I have it on the table, uh, and it is tilted. I'd say it's it's only tilted about 30 maybe maybe 25 degrees right now so it's not real steep uh but it um I never work flat I never I never work flat it's really it's really bad for the posture first off and it's also really bad for the par parallax perspective um uh when you draw flat you're looking at your work at an angle and you end up stretching, uh, no, you end up shrinking it vertically. So you get, you get uh, distortion. So never, never work flat unless you don't have an option. If your option is to not work or only work flat, then at least work flat, but otherwise uh, do what you can to 
avoid working flat. There we go. That's a good amount of yellow. Let's bring in some nice orange now. Oh, hello, Barbara. Good to see you. Some nice uh, bright orange. If I happen to miss anybody's question uh, throughout the stream, feel free to ask it again. I try to try my best to keep up with chat, but uh, sometimes it's sometimes it's difficult. I am just about to call this done, by the way. Uh, so if you have any, have any last minute questions that you've been sitting on, don't, uh, don't wait too much longer. Because I am ready to wrap this project up. Move on to the next one. A little bit darker over here. Okay, Georgina, you enjoy your walk. It was nice having you chatting for a bit. Appreciate it. Maybe I'll see you over on Twitch. Uh, the next live stream will be on Monday. Yeah, Monday and Tuesday next week. Um, I might I might stream some chess over on Twitch uh this weekend as well. 
but uh, yeah, the next uh, YouTube streams will be Monday, Tuesday, and then also next Friday. This ladle, this ladle just uh, driving me nuts. Not, I'm not a big fan of this ladle. Tricky subject. Yeah, it can be, uh, it can be hard to decide when you want to call the project done every time i every time i look up at the reference photo i see another tiny thing that i want to make an adjustment to this ladle being one of them a bit more orange in the shadow here on the inside All right, um, maybe I'll just sit here for a moment and see if there's anything, maybe a little bit darker up here, a little bit darker right now. Uh, maybe I'll just use black. I've been using black mostly uh, today, just sort of trying to get those, trying to get those values, you know, get those dark values put in nicely. Lighten the contrast overall. Yeah, getting getting the ladle to stand out against the lid. Uh, the trick, the trick to get the ladle to stand out, uh, to know that this side. So use the dark values of the lid to make the light side of the ladle stand out, and on this side it's the opposite. Use the dark colors of the inside of the ladle to make it stand out against the brighter part of the lid. That's sort of the uh, thought process that I have there. I am from Poland. Uh, originally, I'm from America, though. But I live in Poland. Hello, uh, Gekwad, Gekwad, sorry, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce your name, but hello, welcome, and Titanium, hello to you as well. I feel like this section is brighter than it should be. I'm going to darken it a little bit, a bit, bit darker gray. Stands out too much, I think. I think that's good. Just about that time to do everyone's favorite part, untape the project. 
I think I, I think I'm finally gonna call it done. Yes, I think I'll finally call it done. So let me move my pencils out of the way. That way I don't drop them and break them. I'll zoom out just a tad more. There we go. All right, um, it is, it's, it's officially done as soon as I untape it because I don't ever want to mess up the clean edges. So here we go. This will be the most satisfying part of my day. I guarantee you that. It's finally coming to an end. I feel like we've been working on this project for a very, very long time. Uh, this is actually the longest running project that I have ever done a uh, full tutorial on. This surpasses all of my courses, uh, surpasses all of my past live tutorials um, by quite a lot, actually, <laughs> by quite a lot. Be careful pulling off your masking tape, by the way, for everyone following along on this project. The last thing you want to do is rush pulling the tape off. <laughs> All of a sudden you just rip off half of your pastel mat and it's just, uh, just going to be game over. Oh, hey there, Anna. What a pleasure. Good to see you. Just in time. Just in time. Just finish this. And there we have it. The last, the last piece of tape. So here, here is the final project. All right, well, there we have it, everyone. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Um, one last plug of my website. If you want to do this exact project and watch all the all 17 parts of it being live streamed in real time with my step-by-step -step instruction, I have a link for my art club in the video description. And uh, you too can create stuff just like this. Uh, and I think uh, the artwork that I showed earlier from my students proves just that. So that is going to do it for today. So I'll see all of you on Monday, hopefully. Uh, and we're going to start a new pastel project on Monday. And you're all invited. Uh, it's going to be public, so you don't have to join the art club to do it. Um, although I would still highly encourage you to do so. Um, but until then, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you next time. Take care. Peace.